Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at the surprisingly lucrative pre-fame career of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Given that he's mostly famous for playing a more brawn than brains, emotionless robot who speaks in fractured English, both in politics and on the big screen, Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't exactly thought of by the general public as a very shrewd, intelligent, and calculating businessman. But it turns out that Arnold was, and still is, just that. Through a heck of a lot of hard work and savvy business dealings, he became a self-made millionaire long before he ever made it to the big screen. This isn't to mention that he was doing this at an age when most of us were still centered our lives around binge drinking with our friends and generally trying not to think about all the student loans that we were accumulating. Though the exact circumstances under which Schwarzenegger grew up have been subject to embellishments over the years, it is definitively known that he was born in the tiny Austrian village of Thal in 1947 into a household that has been variously described as having neither hot water nor electricity. Exactly how true this is or not is up for debate, but one thing is abundantly clear, and that is that Schwarzenegger grew up in a home of incredibly modest means. For instance, in his own words, we had no flushing toilet, no refrigerator, no television. What we did have was food rations and we did have British tanks around to give us kids the occasional lift to the elementary school. A popular anecdote he likes to tell from his youth is about the time his family bought a refrigerator, prompting them to stand around it in awe, taking turns opening and closing it to feel the brush of cold air against their hands and their faces. Yep, as a kid, Arnold Schwarzenegger was more impressed by a refrigerator than a tank, which maybe says a lot about his childhood. Incidentally, during his later time in the Austrian military, Schwarzenegger was a tank driver. He later purchased the tank he trained in, an M47 pattern from a museum in 2008, so that he could use it to offer rides to children during his time as governor. In any event, in his youth, Schwarzenegger was known to have displayed an uncanny affinity for physical fitness and, as a result, threw himself into and excelled at a number of sports, including, but not limited to, soccer, gymnastics, boxing, and swimming. However, it was during an impromptu trip to the gym at age 13 that Schwarzenegger's life was changed forever. His soccer coach at the time had taken him to the gym so that he could work with the rest of the team to strengthen their legs, but Schwarzenegger, who'd never seen bodybuilders before, was incredibly intrigued by the physique and power of the men working out there. He began weight training in earnest at about the age of 14 and was reportedly so dedicated to the craft that he'd break into his local gym on the weekends so that he could get in extra workouts. Schwarzenegger began competing shortly thereafter, placing as a runner-up in the Steyra Hof competition in Graz, Austria in 1963. His first victory came just two years later in 1965 when he was crowned Junior Mr. Europe, a victory that famously cost him a week in military prison. You see, at the time of the Junior Mr. Europe competition, Schwarzenegger was right in the middle of fulfilling his mandatory year of military service for the Austrian government. Unwilling to miss the competition, he went AWOL to complete. After fulfilling his obligation to the military, he once again threw himself into bodybuilding and, spurred by his victory the previous year, was able to secure himself the prestigious title of Best Built Athlete of Europe in 1966. He was then able to parlay this victory into an offer to compete in London for the title of Mr. Universe, a competition he would eventually come to win four times, starting with a historic win at the age of 20. He also won the equally distinguished title of Mr. Olympia an astounding seven times, along with a multitude of other titles and bodybuilding honors throughout his lifetime. You might be thinking at this point that it was all of these wins that made him rich. In some sense, that's true, but not really directly. What Arnold did do with his winnings up to this point was shrewdly save and invest them so that by the time he arrived in the States in 1968 at the age of 21, he had about $27,000 to his name. One such investment was a gym in Munich that Schwarzenegger was able to turn into a success by using his bodybuilding celebrity to advertise it. He similarly used his status as one of the foremost bodybuilders in Europe to start a mail order company through which he sold various pieces of exercise equipment, supplements, and leaflets to the public, something he was inspired to do after many fans wrote to him asking for tips on working out, and he realized that they'd probably pay to hear the answer. Funny enough, unlike many similar services offered by other bodybuilders, Schwarzenegger was particularly successful at this because he didn't just take the money and send nothing, or at least nothing of value. He actually delivered useful product advice to those who'd sent him money. Upon arriving in the States, Schwarzenegger set about making his modest amount of money work for him, once again investing in a mail-order business, which he would later note was much easier in the US than in Europe, since it only required paying $3.75 for a permit. To help make ends meet during his first few tentative years in America,
America, and also to help keep his physique in tip-top condition, he also started a bricklaying company with fellow bodybuilder Franco Colombo. Although the pair offered rock-bottom prices and the chance to have the work done by a man who was crowned the perfect specimen of manliness four years running, few people ended up actually hiring the pair. That was until Schwarzenegger and Columbu doubled their prices and started telling people that they were speciality European bricklayers, at which point they became inundated with work. So up to this point, he was managing to make a decent living, but we implied earlier that he became a millionaire in his 20s. So how did he go from middle class to the 1% so rapidly? In a word, or well two in this case, real estate. After heavily researching the market, he started with a down payment on an apartment complex worth $214,000, which he was able to quickly flip for a cool $360,000, netting him a $146,000 profit just a year after buying it. Rather than blowing it all, as most early 20 males might be inclined to do, he doubled down, reinvesting the profits back into another building. Once again, his investment proved a wise one, with him selling it for a tidy profit a short while after buying it. Each time, rather than spending the money on cars, women, and alcohol, as many early 20s males with his physique might be tempted to do, he simply rinsed and repeated, one-upping his investment every time. A few years later, he was a millionaire. So, if you're wondering how a once poor bodybuilder from Austria with a tenuous grasp of English was able to display such an incredible level of business acumen, one of the first things Schwarzenegger did when he arrived in the States was to enroll himself in Santa Monica College and begin taking English and business classes. At a good amount of brain power and using the discipline he no doubt learned from years of making his body into the best impression of the mythical Hercules possible, by his mid 20s he had achieved the American dream. So, by the time 35 year old Arnold Schwarzenegger was busy becoming a household name with his first Hollywood blockbuster in the 1982 film Conan the Barbarian, he'd already been a millionaire for almost a decade. Later in life, of course, he'd also become the governor of California and even has aspirations for running for president, despite the legal hurdle of not being a natural-born citizen. Certainly not bad for a person whose major-mentioned highlight from his childhood was opening and closing a refrigerator. And now for a bonus fact. As for another physical specimen, who perhaps isn't given enough credit for his brains, in 2009, a team of armed robbers broke into Dolph Lundgren's luxury home on the Costa del Sol in Spain. They tied up his wife, a jewelry designer called Annette Lundgren, who was home alone. They began stealing her jewelry and other items in the house. When they saw a family photo with Lundgren in it, though, they literally dropped everything and fled. They were probably aware that whatever he hits, he destroys. In truth, the 6-foot-5-inch Lundgren was an elite ranger in the Swedish military and has a third-degree black belt in karate. In addition to his obvious physical attributes, he also has a master's degree in chemical engineering and speaks several languages. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that like button and do click that subscribe button below as well. Also, I'd like to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out here at Today I Found Out in making these daily videos, please do consider becoming a patron of this channel. You can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Today I Found Out. There are also lots of rewards that we've laid out for people who help us out. So go over there, check that out. And as always, thanks for watching.